Hey, good morning, Master and Community Church, and welcome to another service. We're glad that you can join with us today. For those who don't know me, my name is Jermaine. You may have searched us on Facebook or found us through Google. It's great to have you on board on today's service and that you're taking the time to view this video clip. Hey, just for my MCC family, just one quick notice. As usually, we would have a Zoom call at 11 o'clock straight after the service, but there is no call for this week. We'll relook at it for next week and we'll go from there. So that's no Zoom call after today's service. Hey, today we have Pastor Pete bringing the word. Isn't it been great, you know, some of the messages he's been bringing uh, based around the Beatitudes, you know, lockdown, but we're not out. And I've been greatly blessed and, and challenged as well. And I pray that you have. So he's about to bring the word after worship. So why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to worship. We have the team who is going to be leading us today. So be blessed. Hey, church. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to worship together. Uh, let's set aside some, some time and make some space for God and, and really worship Him at this time. It's raining. 
Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. Awesome. Thanks, team, for leading us in worship today. Hey, why don't you get out your notepads and your pens, turn your TVs up. We're about to get into the Word. Let's go, Pastor Pete. Well, good morning. 
Marston Community Church. Uh, once again, we, we're meeting in our homes, in our lounges, wherever. Um, and hopefully it's not going to be long until we're actually able to be physically in touch with one another again. Hey, isn't it great to have been having all this wonderful weather where the kids can still get outside and play? And uh, even though it's been colder in the morning, it's been beautiful days. Uh, so I hope you've been enjoying that time that you've had during the daytime with kids back at school. And uh, But it looks like it's going to get a bit colder and wetter soon. So, uh, But that's life, isn't it? Seasons come and seasons go. Um, you know, today I want to start by reading a scripture and then I'll pray. And the scripture is a well-known scripture by most all of us who know Jesus and have followed his teachings and have read the New Testament. And this, these scriptures are the, what, what are called the Great Commission. And this is after Jesus had been crucified, after he'd been risen from the dead, and he appears to the disciples. And it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Wow, this Great Commission is something that um, we're all called into. You know, as we read that scripture from Jesus, we see that Jesus spoke with authority and he like passed a baton on to the disciples he passed a seed of his truth to them and gave them a responsibility to, to go out and continue the work that he had begun. And from that moment on, the disciples went out and they preached the gospel. They preached the word of life. They preached salvation and baptism to all of those that they came into contact with. And then from that, others went out and uh, spread again the gospel. And then through the ages... That, that command of Jesus has passed from one person to another until even today where we see millions and millions of Christ followers all over the world because what was entrusted to the disciples by Jesus was, was passed on. And I want to speak to us today as a church that we need to be reminded, as last week I talked about how, you know, this coronavirus thing although it's been serious it has been a distraction to our faith and our purpose in Jesus and uh, sometimes I think we just need to remind ourselves that we can sometimes lose what has been entrusted to us we can lose the value of it the significance of it by things that come in and distract us and it is something of great um, importance to us you know, I know lately that there's been a lot on Facebook. People have been saying that, you know, the government doesn't trust the churches. They trust other places, restaurants and pubs, so that people can gather in groups of 100, but they don't trust the church. You know, and that kind of affects our confidence a bit, doesn't it? That Because the church should be a group of people that is able to be trusted to follow the rules and regulations and to do things to the best of our ability. We know our people. We look out for one another. And so it's you know a bit strange and perplexing to many of us why the church seems to have been singled out. But I want to challenge us today about what God has entrusted us with. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this on the way here. And I have a false tooth. This tooth here is a false one. And I've had it for a couple of years, and I only have one. And I don't like wearing it. I take it out as much as I can because it doesn't feel natural. But I don't know how many times I've lost it. And it costs quite a lot of money. And so I've spent lots and lots of times looking for it in different places. Sometimes it's fallen off the seat in the car. And sometimes, like even yesterday, I lost it. And uh, it had fallen as I got out of my truck. It had fallen out the 
door and it wasn't till later I found it and unfortunately Deb had run over it and uh, slightly damaged it but we found it but you know something of value is worth looking for and worth holding on to um, and so that's what I want to get across to us today you know ever since I met Jesus and I, I guess for you guys too as as you've walked this walk with Jesus you're walking this walk because you found something of great value and I know that in my testimony and in, in the in the walk that I've been with Jesus for 38 years that Jesus is my hope he's my confidence since the day I asked him into my life there's been something in my life that has given me greater purpose than anything else that I'd found before it, knowing Jesus and reading his word and, and and the help of the Holy Spirit in my life has brought order to disorder in my mind and in my life and that order is still being uh, sorted out day by day it still goes on have have you noticed that uh, when everything's in control in your life life feels pretty safe and uh, it feels safe and sound and and it's secure it feels comfortable it feels like it's a place of normality this is this is how I want life to be this is good I'm enjoying these moments um, and but when we get out of control, when life gets out of control, then fear can tend to come in and we tend to go through all kinds of struggles and it doesn't feel normal and we crave to, for things to get back to normal. And I know I've heard this over the last few weeks, I can't wait till things get back to normal. Well, we've got to ask ourselves, what is normal? You know, normal is usually something that we want to go back to, isn't it? That's the phrase. It'll be good when things get back to normal. But normal sometimes can be going backwards to something that we feel comfortable with. And I just want to challenge us today that normal, when we follow Jesus, isn't going back. It's going forward. The kingdom of God is advancing and God wants us to be a people that are advancing with him. And sometimes it's going to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it's going to feel like, ah... Uh, but God wants to stretch us and grow us and help us to learn to use the gifts of the Holy Ghost in our lives and to rely on his hand in our lives, to rely on our relationship with him. So he doesn't want us to be full of worry, stress, fear and anxiety, but he wants us to rest in who he is. And I guess that's one of the greatest purposes and privileges of knowing Jesus is when we follow him, we learn that he, he is able he is able to help me in any situation that comes along. Even through this coronavirus, God is able to help me. He's able to help you with whatever struggles you're going through. You know, we, we all hope that an effect of our calling to follow Jesus will be a sense of confidence and security or success. I think we all crave that, don't we, in our, in our family life, in our, in our work, in our marriages. Uh, in relationships with others, in finances. We want to have success and, 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 and feel comfortable in that. And even in our health. Sometimes our health is a, is a huge worrier for us. But we understand that another effect in us walking this life and following Jesus is the effect of suffering and struggling. That just goes hand in hand in walking this life, suffering and struggling. But we understand when we follow Jesus, when we follow Christ and his purposes, that suffering and struggling is never without a purpose. You know, it's a horrible thing when we go through suffering and struggling in our life and we don't know the purpose in it. But by faith, we believe. We believe that God is going to bring something good through whatever I'm going through. You know, I want to turn to Paul this morning, one of the most liked and influential knowledgeable men in the bible um, and i want to look at some scripture that he spoke to a young mentor of his paul spoke to young timothy and he said these words he said in timoth 2 timothy chapter 1 verse 6 he says he that is jesus has saved us and called us to a holy life 
not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace is given us in Jesus Christ before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And I want to challenge us today that these words that were spoken to young Timothy are words that we need to be reminded about, that we have been entrusted with a responsibility. You see, that word entrusted is a word that also means committed. Something has been committed to us. And it means to assign responsibility for doing something. We've been assigned a responsibility for doing something for God. It means to put into the care or protection of someone. God has put in our care and protection this amazing mystery of the gospel to share with those around us, to share with this world that goes through so much lostness. And so Paul's letter to his young disciple and friend um, was written while Paul was in prison. And Timothy was this young man pastoring a young church, and he's struggling in this time. Timothy's struggling with persecution. He's struggling with his insecurities as a young man. He's struggling with strong-willed people around him, believers and non-believers. And Paul has been through a lot of experiences with Timothy. And uh, they've preached together, they've taught together, they've traveled together, they've been under threats together. They know each other well. And Paul knows that he's going to be executed soon. So these words are his last letter to young Timothy. And he says, guard the good deposit that is entrusted to you. And I just want to look at some of the connections in this verse that Paul makes. And the first one is, vulnerability and value you know what you value should be deposited in the bank right you know okay there's not very high interest rates at the moment but doesn't it feel better when your money is tucked away somewhere safe and it's not under your bed you don't have to worry about robbers coming and getting it what you value should be deposited somewhere in safekeeping but you feel most vulnerable when you have when you have something of value that can be taken you know, and a lot of people put alarms on their houses and their cars. You know, we have a key that locks our doors on our house. And that is so we can protect and guard what is precious to us. And only those who are closest to us have that key. And uh, so, you know, we need to remember that we feel most vulnerable when what we love the most may feel threatened and not protected. When we're vulnerable, we can quite often feel like we're open to attack or harm. And I guess we will need to ask ourselves sometimes, are there times, moments in my life when I feel more vulnerable than other people in my life? I look at people and they don't seem to struggle with self-worth, with insecurities like I do. You know, And I guess um, vulner being vulnerable means being sensitive to criticism with people around us being sensitive to the fact that i may have failed or or being vulnerable to sin are there temptations in my life that cause me to sin and i know that i'm vulnerable to that or being let down by other people or or even influences around us can make us feel so vulnerable but you know we look around and some people just seem to cruise through life. They don't seem to have vulnerabilities. They don't seem to worry or care about things. Everything just keeps going. But 
you know, sometimes we compare our lives to what others look like and it's not a reality. There are always areas in our life where we are vulnerable. But I want to tell you today that vulnerability signifies value. Thieves don't break into empty houses, do they? If you're under attack in your life and you feel like everything's working against you and there's something spiritual that's working against you, then I can guarantee you, you have something of value, something that has been deposited in your life that is of great value to God. And the devil wants to attack it. He comes to rob, steal, and destroy what is of value to God. And if you are feeling vulnerable because you've been under all kinds of pressures and attacks, then you can guarantee there's something precious and of great value in your life. You know, Timothy had a good deposit. He had value, and it made him vulnerable. It's a bit like when we watch the All Blacks. You know, you see a powerful player in a team. And they're able to break through the defences of the other team. Well, you can guarantee that the strategy of the All Blacks going into that game is that part of their team tactic is that someone, one or two people, they're going to mark that guy. And they're going to try and take him out because he's dangerous. He has great value in the other team. And so the best thing they can do is try and nullify him and take him out. And that what that's doing is showing that that player has great value and you too have great value if you're facing all kinds of issues problems in your life um, yeah so we've got to recognize that it's a compliment that you have something valuable and that's why sometimes you feel vulnerable but sometimes our minds get filled with negative thoughts and those negative thoughts can take over but the fact that you struggle is not to say that you're failing, but that you have something of value. Have you ever thought of it that way? You know, whether you're a child or whether you're a parent that has children, you have something of great value. And that's you're going through struggles with your children. Well, you have something of great value. God has put it in your as your responsibility to take care of that. You may have gifts in your life that still need to grow and be exposed and given a chance to grow or explode. Like I talked about last week, the seed needs to explode, but it also needs the nourishment around it to maintain it and make sure that it, it grows. You may have abilities in your life that are of great value in God's kingdom, and uh, but they make you feel vulnerable at times. You know, sometimes I think as Christians we need to say and speak life to ourselves as well as uh, as well as others when we pray and when we stand before God we need to be able to declare I have something good I have something good instead of putting ourselves down all the time we need to speak with others around us and speak to each other and say you have something good in your life you are of value you know every every day we come up against things where we're going to see that there are things in our value in our life that have value we go shopping we buy something that's a bit more expensive than what we usually buy it might be a dress that's made of a lovely material and we protect it we guard it we look after it because it cost us a lot to get it and you know what's been entrusted to us we need to look after it Another thing, another connection that Paul talks about here is circumstance and confidence. You know, there's bad things happening in our lives all the time. And they don't necessarily mean that, that, that they're a sign that you're losing or failing in your life. Sometimes we, you know, if we're failing in areas, we need to adjust and learn and recover. But sometimes failures um, and, and things where we feel like we're losing Ground may not mean that we are failing. The enemy attacks our circumstances because he's after your confidence. You know, it's like if I take my wallet out, if somebody steals my wallet, they're not stealing my wallet. They're stealing what's in my wallet. That's what they're after. They're after the money inside my wallet or what's of value. And so circumstances around us, 
sometimes affect us in a negative way. But sometimes those circumstances the enemy can be working through because he's after your confidence. We need to protect our confidence. When your circumstances are causing struggles, uh, it's your confidence that's under attack. You know, have you noticed that? It's like even in the worst cases where people are facing cancer. You know, cancer can't beat you. If you're a believer and you're facing a major health issue, then of course we fight and we do everything we can to overcome it because we want to stay here for as long as we can to serve our God. But cancer can't beat you if you're a believer because Jesus has already conquered death. Isn't that great? That should grow our confidence. Redundancy. If you're in a position today where you've been facing redundancy, losing your job and income, it can't beat you, but it can try and take your confidence. When God is able and we are, we are with God, he is with us. And uh, the devil will try and use every opportunity, every circumstance to take away your confidence. I know I've always had issues with confidence in my life. You know, I look around and I look in our church and I think, wow, there's some amazing people in our church. I got amazing gifts who can preach, who have amazing knowledge and intellect. And, and sometimes that, if I let those play on my mind, they can affect my confidence. You know, another thing that changes our confidence is sin, of course, as Christians. Sin changes our relationship with God and we're all sinners, all of us. But amazingly, Jesus Christ has come. He's died on the cross. He took our place. He's, he's allowed us to be forgiven for our sin. That's the message of the gospel. We can come before God. And, uh, and the, the main message is, is that no matter whether we're sinners or whether we've sinned, God still loves us. His love hasn't changed because we've sinned. But sin makes me lose my confidence. And when I lose my confidence, I start to become ineffective. And we've got to watch out for that. So where's your confidence today? Is it strong? Is it grounded in, in who Christ is in your life? You know, we can have personal confidence in our abilities, in our, you know, in our sport or in, in what I'm trained in. And those things are good. They help to build us up. But we've got to be careful that we're not putting all our confidence in what I do. Our confidence needs to be in who our God is and what he can do. The enemy can attack your circumstance, but that is not your confidence. Your confidence really comes from Jesus. And, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, my confidence in myself is not going to last. I know that if I have confidence in myself, then at some stage something is going to come along and pull the carpet out from under me and, and affect me. Something is going to undermine my confidence in this life. And so it's better to have confidence in who God is and what he's able to do. Amen. What Christ can do in us and through us. And so in verse 12, Paul is convinced that God is able to guard what is entrusted in him until that day. You know, he'd seen souls saved, seen people come to know the, the love of Jesus. And so Paul was confident that God was going to protect those souls that had been saved. Paul was also confident that God was able to protect him and guard his soul. Because our lives don't last forever anyway, do they? But our souls, Paul was able to know that he had entrusted his soul to God. Even if he is killed, he was going to be okay. And so in verse 14, it talks about how we should guard the good deposit that's entrusted to us. Trust can be hard, can't it? Sometimes when we can't see God in the struggles, it's, it's hard to trust him. But we need to make statements, faith statements, I believe God can make a way in this situation. Through the circumstances, I believe my God can make a way and speak the truth and declare it out, 
proclaim it in our prayer life because he is able. I might not be able, but I know my God is able. Amen. And so Paul's telling Timothy that it's sometimes easier, sometimes easier to believe that you can trust in God than to believe that God has entrusted you. Wow, did you hear that? Sometimes it's easier to believe and trust in God and entrust to God than to believe that God has entrusted you and me. See, God has confidence in us. God has entrusted us. The Great Commission, go. He gave it to the disciples entrusted them we now are entrusted with the same message of hope to this world and you know sometimes we look at peter walking on the water in that storm and jesus was walking along on the water towards him and peter got out and tried to walk on the water but he doubted he doubted himself he didn't doubt jesus walking on the water he doubted himself and we've got to be careful we don't get into those places where we our confidence in who God is, and what he can do, enables us to doubt in our faith walk. And yeah. So in verse Paul, Paul says, I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard. And so should you. And so should I. We should be convinced that God is able to guard what has been entrusted to us. He's able to guard it. And we know that Timothy had a struggle with timidity. Timidity. He was, you know, his self-worth issues. Obviously, he was young and he was surrounded by parochial, loud, uh, argumentative people. And just by some of the words that we use, he struggled in those areas. But we need to believe that we are able with God's strength in us to do what God's called us to do. And let's go beyond just trusting that God is able. We know that God will guard and keep what we've entrusted to him. And my responsibility to go beyond, God expects me by his power to keep what he has entrusted and deposited in me. My gifts, my talents, my faith, my calling, my ministry, my mission. What about yours? Are you convinced that he's able to Look after those in your life. Are you convinced that you're able to accomplish what God has given you to do in your lifetime? Whether it's raising your kids into a, a place of faith, whether it doesn't matter what it is, don't despise the small things. God will take anything you give him if you entrust them to him and he will help you. Whether it's you know things that he's entrusted to you, like your family, your children, your friends, the gospel in your life. How are you doing in those areas? Guard your confidence. Don't let circumstances rob you of your confidence. In verse 12, Paul said, I know who I have believed and I am convinced. You and I don't have to guard the gospel. It's done okay over time, hasn't it? We don't have to guard that. The gospel has continued to grow over 2,000 years. God will look after the gospel. The other connection Paul makes is safety and strength. Who are we guarding our confidence from? We need to be so aware of this. Who is it we're guarding our confidence from? Paul was encouraging Timothy because they were so close. They'd travelled and preached and taught together and been persecuted, threatened, and they'd even caused a riot together. They'd been through a lot together. And now Paul in prison and, and Timothy's pastor in his church and Timothy's experience in opposition to his message from non-believers as well as believers. They're strong-minded people. They Sometimes they get around us, don't they? And they rob us of our confidence. And so we need to guard our confidence from, first of all, Satan, because he's the one that wants to steal it from you. He wants to neutralize your effectiveness by making you feel unworthy and you can't be any good to God. We need to guard our confidence from other people, strong-willed people in our life, maybe in our families, where God has placed and deposited something in you. Don't allow people to tear you down, to wear you out, to try to neutralize your effectiveness. 
We need to guard our confidence from the philosophies of this world. You know, the value systems, the false doctrines, the false beliefs, the political engineering that goes on. There are all kinds of things that come at us and will try and change the word of God and his truths as principles. So guard your confidence against those things. Sometimes the biggest thing we need to guard our confidence against is ourselves, our insecurities, our negative thoughts, our bad experiences that have made us lose our confidence, our areas of self-worth that we struggle with. Another thing is circumstances. What happens around you and to you? Guard your self guard your confidence against these things like the coronavirus has it affected your confidence some things are out of our control but god is able to restore our confidence and of course the last thing is sin sin undermines your confidence in your position with jesus but i just want to say today to us church that as we finish that you're not alone you're not alone in these struggles. Verse 14 says, Guard the good deposit with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. You know, if you're like Timothy, in a difficult environment, got big responsibilities, pressures, lack of resources, insecurities, then you need encouragement and you need to be an encourager of others. Remind one another of the deposit that is in you and sprinkle it with faith, sprinkle it with prayer with one another. Remind one another who you are, not what you can do, but who you are in Christ. Your authority that Jesus gave to his disciples that they then passed on and each one of us carries that same authority. And maybe today you're in a dif difficult environment with your work, with where you're living or whatever circumstances you're in. Maybe you're carrying big responsibilities. Maybe you're feeling big pressures. Maybe you've got a lack in resources. Then it's time to put these things in the hands of Jesus and the Holy Ghost. You handle your things, what's been entrusted to you, and I'll handle mine, what you entrust to God. See, it's two things. We entrust what we have to God because God has entrusted some things to us and he is able to watch over and protect those things. But we also have a responsibility to stand courageously for truth in these days, to stand courageously for the call of God on my life. And that's an act of courage. But it's also something that we can rely on the Holy Spirit to help us with. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As Paul says, we have to fan the flames. Fan the flames. We need to have an attitude. I remember when I was a young Christian, a man told me, he said, when you go into ministry, or even in the ministry of following Jesus, pray as though everything depends on God, because it does. But then go and do as though it all depends on you. And I think that's part of it, taking responsibility for what we can do with God's help, but entrusting everything to God as well. Because man makes his plans, but God has his purposes. So going forward, MCC, I'm looking forward with excitement to the future. I'm looking forward to us being back together. I'm looking forward to us being a people of confidence, a people of influence, in our families, in our community. I'm looking forward to the message of hope that we all carry and seeing that spread and seeing seed go out and seeing people come into God's kingdom. I hope you are too. Keep praying, keep asking God to show you and give you vision for what he wants to do in these days with our children, with our youth, with our older folk, with our marriage, married couples, with families. It's amazing what God can do. Wouldn't it be great to have amazing fresh testimonies of how God has changed lives. Amen. Amen. As we pray, Father, thank you for your word. Thank, that, thank you that you have entrusted us 
And Lord, I pray for each one of us that as we stand and declare that you are able, that you would fill our lives with a new confidence to be able to go forward and to follow your ways in these days. And Father, we just commit ourselves afresh to you. We thank you for the church, which is your idea. You will build your church. So Lord, as we uh, look forward to coming back together, may you inspire vision, inspire ministries, inspire hearts that are humble and caring for those around us. And Lord, we just want to praise you today and thank you for every good thing that you've poured out. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, bless you, church. May you go in peace and may the Lord be with you. Continue to fellowship. We just encourage you even today, you know, to ring someone up, encourage them, meet for a coffee, meet for lunch, have a meal together. But remember, God is able. Amen. What an awesome word. Thank you so much, Pastor Pete. We're so blessed. Hey, church, a great reminder is there's no Zoom call after today's service. So why don't you enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your family time. God bless. Until next week.